All right, I am two classes. Today we are talking about piecewise functions. So earlier we have reviewed uh, graphing slope intercept form for y equals mx plus b. We also reviewed um, inequalities and both that stuff is gonna come into play today. Mainly the, uh, the slope intercept form, the graphing the, those, um, but we do need to understand uh, inequalities. <clears throat> so getting into it, what a piecewise function is, it is a function split into pieces. So here is an example of a piecewise function. Um, you can see, you know, we have this part down here and then it splits and it's up to this part here. Uh, the split always happens on a vertical line. It's not always the y-axis. This example has a split happening at the y-axis. It can be at any vertical line anywhere. That's that's where the split's going to happen. Um, and we'll get into that. But you can read, so, you, you know, this says the left side of the graph is x minus 2. So the left side of the graph over here is the line x minus 2. And then this side, of the, the right side of the graph is what this is saying. And we, learned, we talked about this with the inequalities is a uh, 2x plus 1. So that's going up this way. So it's just a function split into two pieces, and they're not going to be the same equation every time, the, the two the two pieces. Um, first thing we're going to do is just uh, learn how to evaluate these. This is actually pretty simple. Um, <clears throat> all you need to do here, so we have, f of negative 3. We want to evaluate f of negative 3. So what this means is find the value of the function f of x is equal to this whole thing when x is negative 3. That's what this says. Find um, what the function is when x equal negative 3. Uh, so what I need to do is first find the range that this falls in. So if I look negative 3 is it less than negative 2 or is it greater than or equal to negative 2? Negative 3 is less than negative 2. So that means I'm going to use this part of the function, the 5x um, minus 1. So I'm going to use f of x is equal to 5x minus 1. And then to find f of negative 3, all that means is I'm going to substitute in, I'm going to replace the x with negative 3. All right. So this is 5 times x, so 5 times negative 3 is negative 15 minus 1. Negative 15 minus 1 is negative 16. So f of negative 3 is negative 16. And then we're done. All right. So uh, next, let's do another example here. Um, sure, green. So wrong, I want the highlighter. And green. So f of negative 2. Uh, so negative 2, what range does it fall into? Is negative 2 less than negative 2? No, they're equal. So this one has the little line underneath. So negative 2 is greater than or equal to negative 2. So I'm going to use this. So to evaluate this one, I am going to uh, use the function uh, x plus 3. So in this case, when f of negative 2, I'm going to use f of x is equal to x plus 3. Uh, so to do this substitution, I'm going to replace the X with a negative two. Uh, the parentheses, I don't really need the parentheses. Nothing happens with them because it's not getting multiplied or anything. So this is just negative two plus three. Negative two plus three is one. So F of negative two is equal to one. Um, if you notice, sometimes you're given two different functions. Pay attention to what you're looking at here because you could have a, a G, all right? If it's G, you gotta use the G of X. So if you're looking at the assignment from tonight, make sure you're matching, you're using the correct piecewise function. The G has to match the G. So again, same thing, take a look, find where zero fits in this range. Is that zero less than negative one? No, is it in between negative one and two? Yes, it is. So for this one, I'm gonna use, uh, f of g of x is equal to 3. And since there's no x in this one, that just means anything that is in this range between negative 1 and 2 is just equal to 3. And that's the answer. So there's nothing to work out there. All right. uh, let's do one more. So g of 5. 
right? That is greater than two. So I'm going to use this function for that one. So I'm going to use g of x is equal to 2x minus 5 to evaluate. Again, I'm going to be doing g of 5. So to find g of 5, I just replace the x with a 5. Input a 5 into that function. 2 times 5 is 10. Minus 5 is 5. So you get g of 5 is equal to 5. All right. Uh, next up. We are going to be graphing these. So um, first thing we want to do, um, we're going to graph these lines and just normally, and then we're going to erase what we don't need. That's going to be the easiest way to do it. Um, so first thing you want to look at, um, yeah, we're going to move so it shows up a little bit. Notice we have the, the zero here, all right? Uh, that is going to be where we're going to put our imaginary line at x equals zero. Um, so it's it's going to be a vertical line. I'm going to put it in just a nice dotted line here. So we can see this is the imaginary line. Uh, in this case, it is the y-axis where the, the function is going to split. And so I look at this, the zero. So x equals zero is the y-axis. So you're going to put it on the y-axis, right? Uh, then I'm going to graph these. So I'm going to do these in two different colors here. So I'm going to do uh, the top one in green. So uh, y is equal to negative x. Let's do that in green. Um, so you're going to graph it like normal, uh, the slope. So this has an imaginary one in front of it. So the slope is going to be negative one. Uh, the b value has nothing to add to the end, so the B value is zero. Um, so I'm gonna graph this, I'm gonna start my at my starting point, the y-intercept is zero, zero, so this is gonna be my starting point here. Um, slope is negative one, I'm gonna make that fraction, negative one over one. So from here, I'm just gonna plot some points. So I'm gonna go down one, right one, from my starting point, down one, right one, down one, right one, down one, right one. All right, uh, and then I want to go in the opposite direction. So up one, left one, up one, left one. That's a lot of points. That's plenty, All right? So I'm going to go down this way, and then down this way. I'm going to do the whole thing. You should do this lightly. We're going to erase what we don't need. All right. Um, and actually, why don't we erase it before it gets too messy? So to figure out what we don't need, I'm going to look at this part here. So x is less than zero. So I want the part where it's just x is less than zero. X is the, um, the horizontal. So I'm going to keep the values where the x is less than zero. So that's going to be the left side of the graph. The other way to think about this, if you want to just do it a little quickly, think of the inequality as an arrow. All right. I want the part of the graph that is going to the left. It's pointing to the left. So I want the part of the graph pointing to the left. So I'm going to erase everything on the right side. Oh, and then one more thing. Notice how this doesn't have a line over it, under it. So that means, oh, I didn't want to erase that whole thing. Um, I'll put it in. Um, so back to here, we just want the left side. Uh, I need a open circle at the end. All right. Uh, the next line I'm going to do on the right side uh, or in blue. So the next one is going to be x plus one. The slope, there is an invisible one there. So slope is one. The b value is also one. So uh, my starting point is going to be at the point zero, one. So zero, one, put my point. And then the slope is up one over one, up one over one. And since I already erased Left side, I know this is just going to be the right side of the graph. Because if you look, if you make an arrow, this is pointing to the right. So it's just the right side of the graph has a line underneath. So I need my endpoint filled in. And there we go. And that's all we need. Uh, let's do another example. Um, so this is centered at something other than zero. So 
I'm going to look at the this is red this time. I'm going to look at here. So one. So these are one. So that's the imaginary line where my piecewise function gets split. So what I want to do is go to one on the x-axis, right? One, I'm going to go on the one on the x-axis, and I'm just going to put my imaginary uh, line that's going to split the function up, right? Now I'm going to graph this like normal. Again, I'm going to do a green and a blue graph. So I'm going to do top one in green. So 2x, so y is equal to 2x. Uh, the slope of this one is 2. Uh, the B value is 0. So that means my starting point is at 0, 0 at the origin. So I'm going to put my starting point <clears throat> at 0, 0. So just remember your starting point, we start, we always start on the y-axis, right? The y-intercept, right? Um, we're going to erase from this line, but always start on the y-axis. So I'm going to plot my points using the slope. Uh, I'm going to go up two to the right one. So up two, right one, up two, right one. It's good there. I'm going to go the opposite direction because I need both down to left one. So graph here. Graph here. So now if we look, look at this. This can be the left or right side of the graph. X is less than one. So we only want to keep the part of the graph that is less than one. So that's going to be the left side. Again, if you just want to quickly look at it, look at this as an arrow pointing to what direction this line should go. It's pointing to the left. So I'm going to just keep the left side of the graph as a line underneath. So this does need to be filled in. It is a closed circle but I'm going to erase the right side of the graph that we don't need, right? Um, next, I'll do the next one in blue. So the next one is y is equal to negative x plus one. Uh, the slope, again, some invisible math there. There's a one in front. So the slope is negative one over one. The b value is going to be also going to be one. So that's going to start at 0, 1. So again, we start on the y-axis. We do not start on, the, on our imaginary line that splits our function. We start on the y-axis, so start at 0, 1 here. My slope is down 1, right 1. So down 1, right 1. Down 1, right 1. That's good there. I'm going to go the opposite direction, up one, left one. That's enough points. I'm going to connect the dots. Going up. And then yeah, this way. Not the best line, but whatever. So uh, again, to figure out which part of the line I want, I'm going to look at the inequality. I want the side that where x is greater than 1. So that's the right side. Also, look, the arrow is pointing to the right. So I want to keep the right side of this graph. So from our imaginary line, I'm going to erase everything not on the right side. So there, uh, if I look here, there's no line underneath. So this, I need to make sure um, I have an open circle on my endpoint there. And there we go. We have graph, graph the piecewise function. So the three steps that you want. Uh, one, put your imaginary line that splits the graph. Two, uh, graph each line. Three, erase what you don't need. And that is it. That will do it for this lesson today. If I can shut this down. I'm not going to do that one. We've done enough. Um, we'll see you next time for something else.